Oh, don't ask me. Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Hi, Mackenzie. Welcome to our wine series. Today we are featuring our bubbly, our champagne versus sparkling wine. So again, we have our um, resident. I am the community manager. <laughs> That's, That's okay. okay. I promise. My name is Tria Morgan. I have nothing to drink yet. I promise. I promise. And then we have our concierge manager, Felipe, here. So today we are sampling three bottles of lovely bubbles. Bubbles are my favorite. Bubbles are also very festive, but you can have bubbles with just about everything in the world. So we're going to start with a little history and background about champagne because there are lots of things I'm sure you didn't know. We're going to talk about that and then we have three different bottles of bubbles that we're going to sample. We have a champagne from France, we have a method champagne was from America, and we have a cava from Spain. We're going to sample all three of those. Very delicious. Let's get started. So a little history. So sparkling wines are actually all over the world. Every region has a particular sparkling wine. Only France and only a certain region of France can they call their sparkling wine Champagne. And that's in the Champagne region, of course. Mm -hmm. Other regions of France, when they make sparkling wine, it's called a Cremant. So when you go to the store, Champagne is $75. Cremant is maybe $25. So that's mm -hmm. the big difference. It's all made in France. It's all made in the same. They're, they're literally next door to each other, some of them but because they're not in the designated Champagne region, they have a different name, different price point. Hmm. Was it Sangiovese that was like that? Sangiovese and Chianti, exactly. I remember you explaining it. So Chianti comes from the Chianti region in Italy. Sangiovese is the grape that is used to make the Chianti. Got it. But because it is right. made and produced in that one little area, it gets to have the name Chianti. Chianti. All right, so we're going to use again our W set tasting rules, but we're going to add some additional tasting descriptors that we're going to be looking for with the champagne. So with champagne, you will have bubbles, of course. The bubbles can be big or they can be small. And when you put the champagne in your mouth, sometimes you will notice that it'll foam up. These are just different descriptors and different ways that producers produce their wine. So if you know you like a wine with bubbles, when you try it, you'll remember the one that has big bubbles or little bubbles or if it foams in the mouth. So when you, all these things could possibly happen. These three wines I've not tasted. Have either of you had any of these? Yes. I have not. I mean, these particular yeah. brands. Yes. Which brand have you had? Yeah, the Spanish one. The Cava? Yes. You've had that one? <laughs> so you will be surprised. And I've not had it, so don't tell me. Okay. <laughs> Well, because I, I want to I want to experience it on my own. I don't, All right. I don't want to give it away. Keep it a secret. And then we're going to circle back around and we're going to try some food pairings. Because this is such a celebratory uh, beverage here, we're going to try some food. We have a little pate and we have white cake. How many times have you gone to a wedding and they've served champagne with the wedding cake and it is the most horrible combination? I can't remember. <laughs> oh, I can't. I can. Always the bridesmaid and always the bride, too. But, I've been to a lot of weddings and they serve that white cake and they have brute champagne. And brute, again, means dry, no sugar. And they serve this really, really dry champagne with a really sweet cake and the two just don't match. Mm -hmm. So you think it would, but it, it's not. You need a little sugar for that sugar yes. on the cake. So mm -hmm. we're going to try the kava last with the cake and let's see how that works out. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and we'll start first with the wine from France. This is the Nicolas Belletti. Here you go. And it says it is a true champagne. Ooh. It also says it has uh, intense candid fruit flavors. So we're going to see. So now 
Remember all the wines that we open? They have the little foil. So champagne has a foil wrapper as well, but it should have, <laughs> this one says open with care. Can you see that? So now remember, these are all under pressure. They're very, very dangerous. You don't want to open it looking at it or open it at someone because the cork will pop out. So what we're going to do first is take the foil off. And it has a wire cage. The wire cage is to keep the cork in place. And another little tidbit. You know the uh, armor? The suit of armor, mm -hmm. right. it was invented to go and check on the champagne that's being stored because the bottles were so thin that they would burst under the pressurization. So the suits of armor were invented so that the men could dress up, go down in the cellar, check the bottles of wine, and not get killed or injured. Oh, wow. And if you go to certain wineries in France, you'll actually see the suits of armor there for you to actually look at. So here's a little wire hasp. Screw that. Always open away from your guest. Okay. And who thinks when you open the wine you want to hear that pop? You do, you do not have to hear it. You actually don't want to hear it because right. when you pop it, what you're doing is letting out the pressure. Right. So you want to keep the pressure in, so you want to keep it really quiet. And the way to open, remember that punt we talked about? This yes. bottle has a punt. So this is to help you secure the bottle. Take a towel, cover the cork screw, the cork, because you don't want it to pop out. And you're going to securely hold the cork and rotate the bottle, not rotate the cork. Hmm. Makes a difference. And then you will feel the cork move. And then you go a little slower, a little slower. And you want to just make a little pop. That's kind of loud. Hmm. And when you pour the champagne, you know how you pour champagne, it runs over the glass? Yes. So what you do is you pour a little. Actually, ladies first. Thank you. Thank you. You pour a little, let the bubble settle. Then you pour a little more and it won't run over. And remember, we're just tasting. Felipe likes to have a lot of glass, a lot of in his glass, but we're not going to do that today for him. I'm going to pour a little bit for me. <clears throat> and you want to have the bubbles as part of the whole experience. It makes it very festive. Yes. But champagne, you can have champagne with anything, and we're going to show you some other Thank God. Some other casual yeah. things. All right, so put the champagne down. So now, again, we're going to do the same W set rules for tasting. First thing, we're going to look at the champagne. What color would you call this? Very clear. Clear, and I would say it's golden. Mm -hmm. It's very golden, mm -hmm. yes. Now see how rapid the bubbles are moving? Yeah. All right. This is really, really carbonated, really, really fermented. And look at the bubbles. They're very small. They're small, yes. And there's no foam around the rim. No. Mm -hmm. These are just things that you notice. There yeah. was originally, but it just That was because, away. yes, we were pouring it in. So now, what's the next thing we're going to do with the wine? Smell, smell it. And I can smell this without putting it under my nose. Can Me you? too. So can Me I. too. Mm. It smells very delicious. It's my favorite. And I dressed up for it. Oh, my God. So what this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You guys, a long week. you have to try this. <laughs> so what uh, fruit flavor do you smell? Oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. I'm never good at this. Okay, apple. Uh -huh. What kind of apple? Green apple. Yes, green apple. What about peach? Mm -hmm. You can, yeah, you smell peach? A little bit. I smell a lot of citrus. I smell lemon. I smell orange. I definitely smell green apple and I, it almost smells like a green apple candy. It's sweet. It smells sweet, mm -hmm. but this is a brute, which means it should be dry. It should be dry, yeah. Right. So 
Here's to all the first responders and our medical workers and our uh, essential employees that are out working. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to you. So now when we taste this, we're going to hold it in the mouth and see what kind of bubbles you get. It's very bubbly and the, the bubbles are not big. They don't sustain. No. Mm -hmm. It's so almost it's, foamy, but I was going to say it's that it's not foamy, but it's like borderline. Right. It's right. very minimal. Mm -hmm. What about the alcohol? I like it. It's, but it doesn't it's, stick with your mouth. No, no. It's, now, what about the what we, what we call juiciness? We refer to juiciness, which is the acid. What do you think? Does it make your mouth water? No. It's very light. It made my mouth water. It did. Oh, it did? Let me try again. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's more for me, it's more about the, the foamy presence See, in the mouth and then it goes away and then it keeps right. it very light. So the finish yeah. is uh the finish is not long. No. The other thing too, so champagne likes to be kept cold. That's why you have the stem. You really want to hold champagne by the stem. Because if you heat it up, it will definitely change the flavor. Yeah. Definitely change the flavor. Okay. So this is French champagne. We're going to save this because we're going to compare this to the American method champagne was. All right. So the method champagne was simply means it is prepared in the same fashion as French wine. So this is an American wine and this is um, Jacqueline Leon. This is made in New Mexico produced and bottled in New Mexico. Hmm. I didn't know New Mexico had wine, I didn't but know. you learn something new every day. So again, I'm gonna pull the foil. With the other wines, we open them right away. With the champagne, you wanna open it when you're ready to use it because of the bubbles and the fermentation, you don't want it to escape. Can you store it for over a day if you cover it? You can, but it tends to go flat. It does, right? It does tend to go flat. Now, you know, we talked about the stoppers. You can put a stopper in champagne that will help it not go flat as fast, but usually a day is about all you're going to get. Mm -hmm. So again, we're going to take the towel. It's a commitment. You open a bottle, you have to finish it. Yes, yes. We're opening four bottles today. Actually, three. Still. So we hold the punt, hold the bottom, secure the cork, twist the bottle, not the cork. That's a wonderful technique. And you and notice that the bottle is tilted a little bit. That's to help the pressure too. And you don't want to be in a rush because if you do, the pressure will make everything in the bottle come out of the bottle rapidly. Okay, here we go. I can feel it. And there we go. That was a lesser pop. So this is American method champagne. Again, we pour a little in the glass, let the bubbles settle, and then you come back and pour a little more and it won't overflow. Yeah, I'll pour myself a little bit. I love the first one. Very good. Real champagne. Mm -hmm. But we're going to try the American one oh. and we're going to see if we can notice any difference. It's so. Dark. Uh -huh. Now this is truly golden. Yes. And look at the bubbles. Can you see the bubbles? Oh, they're more spread out. They're more the spread out. Were like in the and they're a little larger. So yes, these, are are. Just, these are just differences in the manufacturer and the way that they process. The wine has no effect on the flavor. It still tastes delicious. It's just, these are some differences that you'll notice. So again, can we smell it? This one tastes my personal is much sweeter. And we have to get a little closer to the glass. Yes. I smell less alcohol and more fruit. Oh, yeah. something very sweet. And I smell something almost minerally. Like, right. 
petrol, maybe. Right, and very bubbly. You smell like petrol, sort of faint, sort of petrol smell. That has to do with the fermentation as well. Oh, it does. That's definitely. I don't care so much about the smell for this one mm -hmm. yet. And so it smells one way, but Correct. let's see if it tastes a different I way. I smell Correct. Mm -hmm. But I love, Tricky. now the color of this one, I really like this golden color. I like right. this color. Okay, so let's do a little quick taste. Mm. Oh, a lot lighter, but not nearly the not, bubbles. Not I as many bubbles. I don't feel the foam bubbles mm -hmm. in my mouth anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel dry. I feel foam, but no bubbles at all. It just sort of foams up. Mm. But it is definitely sweeter. Yes. And a little more acid. And how do we recognize the acid? You get the watering in the back of the mouth. Mm. Oh, OK. This, the other one was a little more refreshing, I think. I think oh, so too. This yes, one absolutely. is not, uh, not as refreshing. It's not bad. It's just, there's different, there's a different taste. I prefer the first one. Yes, I do as well. All right, so now we're going to try. <laughs> not yet. We're waiting for the food because we want to try the wines first. Then we're going to come back and try the food because if you try it, it'll, 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 it will affect the way the wine tastes. I'm hungry. I know. I'm going as fast as I can. It's all right. So it's these all right. are all brut. Uh, these are all brut, which means that they are dry. But I'm hoping that the cava has a little more sugar because uh, in Spain they make their sparkling wine a little different. Why are all? I've used, I've used the cover one to make um, mimosas. Really successful. My favorite beverage <laughs> on a Saturday morning. <laughs> We're actually going to make some mimosas at the very, very end. I have that because I'm going to let you try. Not all champagne is good for mimosas. Correct. Because too much sugar, it doesn't work. You really want to dry. So again, this has a punt. We're going to hold on to the punt and rotate the bottle, not the cork we wanted to pop out. Okay, this one's gonna be a little stubborn. There he goes. Pop. You can actually feel it move. There we go. So when you go to a restaurant and they don't make it pop for you, they're really saving the bubbles. That's what they're trying to do for you. There's so much history behind champagne. Another little tidbit. So Veuve Clicquot, which is the champagne that's in the orange label, was actually the husband, but he passed away and he left his wife a widow and she had eight children. So she took Veuve Clicquot and made it what it is today. That's a beautiful champagne. They were trying to say women don't belong in the vineyard. And she said, I have eight children to take care of and my husband left all this, I need to take care of my children. So she marketed the her. wine, turned it around, and we enjoy it as we do, and it's because of her. Oh my like, God. I love that. More story. respect to yes. women. Yes. 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 So buy some moves we come. Uh, so now this wine, this is Cava. This is from Spain. Right away, I see less bubbles. Yes. Hardly any bubbles. Hardly any bubbles. Just a few. Mm -hmm. The color is more yellow, mm -hmm. golden, like the French it's, one. It's more yellow. It's between the first and second one. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but remember, this is made exactly the same way that they make uh, champagne in France. It's just made in Spain. And so uh, the UK, in the UK, in the EU, and in France, they have made a decree that you cannot call it champagne unless it was processed and made in the champagne region. Here is another uh, little tidbit to show you how serious they are. So in 2008, 3,000 bottles 
of California sparkling wine was delivered to Belgium and it said champagne on it. The Belgian government destroyed 3000 bottles because it wasn't champagne. So they take their uh, terms and codes very, very seriously because it's it's money. So let's see what we smell. So this smells really off. I can hardly smell anything. I can hardly smell anything bright. either. It smells. I mean, I really have to go into the glass. Yes. To get yes. Like, is there anything there? It smells kind of. Let's let's see if we can swirl it around so we can get anything out of this. Two bubbles. I smell. <laughs> I know this sounds crazy, but I smell grapes. I smell grapes. I smell like grape soda, grape candy. You smell that? I really get nothing. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's really light. Yeah. And it's more hint of liquor, alcohol. Of the alcohol? Yeah, that's it. Let's see what the alcohol content is. This is 11.5%. Light. So it's very light. Very light, yeah. yeah. This one is 12.5. Let's see the one from France. The one from 12. France. 12. Okay. It doesn't say. It's on here somewhere. I just don't see it. So here we are with champagne that's 11 and 12. We had wine that was 14 and a half. So it's a big difference in the wine. So very little bubbles, great color, it's clear. Just very little bubbles. So let's take a sip. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yum, yum, yum. Yum. It definitely makes my mouth flatter. Yes. I like it. No bubbling. <laughs> no bubbling. No. Uh, more foam, less no bubbles at all. Right. Do you get um I get sort of a nutty a little bit. Like a hazelnut or something. A tiny tiny hint. It's an aftertaste. But it's very light. Alcohol is really low, which is great. This is a little bit dangerous because it's so light that you can drink more and more and more. And not, because and not realize. Yes. Not realizing not that realizing. it has alcohol, people. <laughs> it's going to hit you. All right. So now so <laughs> we're going to try those champagnes with some food. We're doing a little food pairing before the food pairing next week. So we're going to try these. So when you are pairing food with champagne, Two things to remember. The champagne has the bubbles. Excuse me. The bubbles works great with rich food. So we have pate. We're going to try some pate with the French champagne. And okay. then we're going to try the cupcake with the cava because I think it was the sweetest. Or do you think the American? Uh, For me, the American. I think it's the the okay, so we'll try the American with the cupcake and we'll see how it works. But I'm going to also have you try the champagne with the cupcake to see the difference, how okay. it just doesn't taste well. So try the pate with the uh, with the champagne from France and tell me what you think. I'm going to try a little Is bit. there any particular type of pate to taste it with? Or to no, it's with? whatever you like. And the reason why pate goes really well is because it's very rich. And the bubbles sort of wash across your palate and it just goes really well. Mm, I love So you've had the champagne without food. Now you're going to try it with the food and see if it tastes a little different. With this one? Mm hmm. Oh, I did it backwards. Oops. No, that, no, you didn't try it. I can try again. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Mm. Oh, oh they like even better. Okay, another try. Here we go. Yeah. Drink first and then pate. Mm. But it makes <laughs> you 
No, it's a mint one. The champagne tastes different though. More fruit flavors com comes out. I'm sorry, I went down the wrong way. <clears throat> Now try the champagne. Do you taste more fruit? <clears throat> oh, yes. Yes. <clears throat> it's a lovely, lovely pairing. So try the pate with the cava, which was your least favorite, and see if it tastes a little better. I thought it did. <clears throat> oh, you tried it with the cava? Mm -hmm. Oh, so, so we were discussing. I, I liked it with this, but I think it really changed. That's the American one. Which one is the color? Oh, the last oh, one. Oh, stop. <clears throat> I'll have to try that one too. Okay. So you want so, to take, I'm sorry. Yes. Try it with the <laughs> so take a sip first and then compare. Right, because I want you to get a taste of the wine by itself. So, okay. Then taste it with the food. So <clears throat> we were discussing, they had a uh, not favorite, not so favorite, and they had a favorite. So when they tried the food with the not favorite one, it tasted a little different. So that's what we were discussing earlier in the other sessions. Wine is really intended to be paired with food. Yes, you can drink it by itself, but when you pair wine with food, it tastes so much better, much more intense. What do you think? The same or? I like it with this one. Me too. I prefer, I prefer the first one, <coughs> champagne. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful pairing. Mm -hmm. They can date. <laughs> okay, so you tried the three wines, one the food. Now I'm going to try the cupcake. So when you go to a wedding and they pull out this white wedding cake <clears throat> and the champagne, and you go, oh, horrible combination. You want a sweeter Hungry. wine. Mm -hmm. It does have paper on it, I think. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. So champagne first and then a cupcake. And then a bottle of the cupcake, yes. What about the frosting? Should we focus more on the cake or both? Both. Right. So which one? The first one, champagne? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The combo. Oh, oh Kappa? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chia. <laughs> well, only because we know the French champagne had very little sugar in it. Okay, Kappa. Oh, I'll good. wait for you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> so when you go out to a restaurant <clears throat> and you're celebrating, or you're just wanting to have a bottle of champagne and you want to have dessert, you know what desserts you're going to pair with the champagne. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I like it. Is that all right? No, you're supposed to like it. You no. can like whatever you <laughs> like. I want you to like it. Now try it with the American, which we also thought was a little sweeter as well. Oh, that's going to be the challenge. Cheers. That was really good with the American one. I think it does have more sugar in it. It's sweeter. Yes. Oh, that's sweeter. Almost too much. For me, it's too much. I prefer this one. Me too. Right. So, me too. So now you know when you're out and you want to have dessert, and you want to celebrate, have champagne with your dessert and have a glass of cava. You don't have to have port or some other after dinner drink. If it's fancy, you can have some champagne with dessert. So we're talking about the things you can have with champagne. So champagne, you want something rich. We already discussed that. Did you know buttered popcorn would go great with champagne? No. I'm excited for that. So I have some truffle popcorn. <gasps> oh, that's exciting. Try some truffle popcorn. Right. Yes. Truffle popcorn with the champagne of your choice. And just try it and see how, how well you like it. Ready? 
Which one? Wait. No, ladies first. Mm. I'm going to try it with champagne. Looks <clears throat> like a little more champagne or what? I'm okay. I'm okay. okay. Thank yeah. you. These are the smallest little popcorns I've ever seen. I, Aww, they're petite. So cute. Yes. <laughs> petite mm -hmm. Popcorn. Actually, I'm going to have a little too. Please do. Please do. So I'm going to, I like the French one myself. I'm a little Me bougie. too. So Me that too. three of us will do <laughs> the French one. This is the one that we like the most. Can you see it? I can taste it. All right. That bottle was about $25. Oh, so and it's from Yeah, it's from France. It is champagne. And you don't have to buy a $75 bottle of champagne to get a good bottle. You just have to know what you like and tell the person assisting you, this is what my price range is and this is what I want to buy. Hmm. Perfect. So, Are we ready? Cheers. 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 Cheers at home. Cheers. Mm. The rich truffle this hits taste. the spot with me. I would take this over a cupcake. Any day. <laughs> Will you? Mm -hmm. I like salty better than I'm sweet. Salty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you're at home, have you know a twenty-five dollar bottle of champagne in the refrigerator. Some friends drop by, bust out that bottle of champagne. Make them feel special. The wine store is just up the street. We bought these wines there. They're fantastic. They're very, very reasonable. And you can have movie night with champagne and popcorn. You don't have to have I like it. soda or juice or cocktails. Make it fancy and have champagne. Dress up. You gotta wait for New Year's. You can wear a gown <laughs> on Friday night. That's a little much, but <laughs> I don't think my gown will fit. <laughs> That's a different subject. COVID 15. <laughs> so um, in conclusion with all the champagne. Uh, champagnes are one of my favorites and you can do so many things. There's champagne cocktails. We can also for Sunday brunch anywhere on the um, in Seattle. Excuse me. You have mimosas. So the best champagne or sparkling wine to use is one that is dry because you know the orange juice is very, very sweet. Right. So you don't want anything that's sweet. Uh, you want it to be very dry and brut. So let's make a couple of Mimosas. Let's pretend it's Sunday morning, people. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we woke up like Easy this. Like <laughs> so which one? I'll let you choose which one you would like for your mimosas. Ladies first. I would like this one. The cover? Which is this one. Okay. Okay. So when you're making mimosa, the traditional way to do it is you juice first. And you want about half and half, but it's really what you prefer. So there we go. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. <laughs> and which one would you like? <laughs> just, just the comma. <laughs> Forget about that juice. Your comma, yeah? <laughs> That's my comma. So again, yeah. orange juice. Thank you. And then, <laughs> and then, Thank you. I'll take care of that myself. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I'm going to go with the American because I really? like bubbles in my uh, mimosa. The Cabo oh. had very little bubbles. Correct. And I like the bubble part. That makes it easy one. Well, may I serve you then? Well, of course. Does it have a point? No, it doesn't. Have a point. <laughs> <laughs> also, you can win. use when. <laughs> oh I, I don't want to like, yeah, like, I don't want all that. Okay, <laughs> 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 some champagne in glass. <laughs> um, also, when you when you are making your mimosas, you can use uh, fresh squeezed juice. You can use the juice that's been filtered. I prefer it to be pulpless. I want it to be uh, pulpless just because with all the pulp inside the glass, it's going to uh, inhibit the bubbles. And I really like the bubbles. 
Thank you very much. You're so welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, ladies. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Mm. This is good. Delicious. Oh my gosh. Let's go to church. Okay. So <laughs> now now. What <laughs> way too much fun. <laughs> so <laughs> what can we pair it with? The mimosa. Did you bring some batch pairs? More champagne. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe biscuits. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the fried chicken? <laughs> But we have, right. we have the popcorn and you have the pate. Uh, all that works well. What I'm trying to do with the champagne in particular, people are really, really intimidated about champagne. Or they think they can buy a $2.99 bottle of Corbel and think that's champagne. No, that's sparkling wine. Chateau, Chateau, Chateau Saint Michel has a really great sparkling wine. It's a sparkling wine, it is not champagne. So, so what is the difference? So the difference is for it to be called champagne, it must be grown and processed right. in the champagne region. Right. If it is grown anywhere else, it is not called champagne. Got it. If it is grown anywhere else in France, it is called a cremant. Hmm. They could be next door, the lot, the plots could be literally next door to each other. And if it's not in the champagne region, it's, it's a cremant. If it's made anywhere else in the United, anywhere else in the world, Spain, it's called uh, Cava. Italy, it's called Spumante. That's a sparkling wine. In America, we have sparkling wine, we have method champenoise, which means it is made in the same method as in France. Beautiful. And we talked about uh, varietals. Champagne has three main varietals. It has Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir, and Chardonnay. Those are the three main grapes that are used to make champagne. So there is no champagne grape. It is three grapes to make the champagne. I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah, there's three grapes to make champagne. So do not be intimidated. Wine is simply a fermented fruit juice. That's all it is. This is to make you feel so much more comfortable when you go into the wine store to purchase a wine, when you go to a restaurant and you're ordering wine off the wine list, you now can read the list and know what it is you're reading and not be intimidated. Always ask for help. Always, always ask for help. Any other questions? What was your favorite? What was your favorite? The Cava. You like the Cava? Mm -hmm. How about you? French, the Champagne. Excuse me. I like the French too. And Bougie though. And what about the food pairing one? Which was your, your favorite food pairing? I know what you like, but tell us again. I think it was the champagne with the pate. I thought you loved the but popcorn. I like the popcorn too. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. I can try and what about you? The, the popcorn board. is definitely my favorite. It's yeah. delicious. For me, it was the um, pate with the champagne. Yes. It so, just elevated the flavors and the yes. combination was so spot on. Delicious. So, other you asked about other food parents. Oysters on the half shell would go great with champagne because they're very rich, they're very minerally, and the bubbles sort of clear and cleanse your palate all at the same time. It's great. It that. sounds exquisite. <laughs> when we have the, the popcorn, the truffle flavor of the popcorn goes really well with the champagne. It's truffle flavor is very rich, and then with the champagne, it's sort of elevated it a little bit. I have a tie between the pate and the popcorn. But I'm a snacking kind of girl too. So. And I like that too. I like the popcorn by itself. <laughs> Even without the it's good. So if you have Very any good. questions about champagne, please uh, email us at Active Building or stop by the concierge desk and let us know. Uh, I hope that you two enjoyed it and I hope you two will be encouraged to try some champagne or some cava or some sparkling wine or as we call it, American method champenoise, based on the French, on the French method. That's my southern girl coming out. Um, let's see, what else, what else? I'd like to send a thank you whenever you're ready. Go ahead, yes, no, thank you. So as you said before, that we are toasting in celebration <coughs> of the frontliners of this pandemic, 
we as a community would love to thank you one more time for being there in the medical industry. What you do does matter a lot, and we would love to respect what you do and your commitment to your career by our commitment in our industry, being professionals, taking care of each other, and promising to take care of our clients as much as possible. This is fun, this is entertaining, this is beautiful, it's a celebration. We celebrate you and we salute you 100%. Thank you for what you do and thank you, Phyllis, for thank everything and all you. the knowledge. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you, Chia. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. So next week we're going to have food pairing with all the wines that we've had. What we're going to do, because we're going to have too many wines to try, we're going to let you pick your favorite wine and you're going to pair it with the food we're going to have. Just one? Okay, fine. Okay, well, we have nine bottles. You want to go, you want to go through nine bottles? We can do uh, it. We can do it. Bring a sleeping bag. <laughs> <laughs> but next and week. Gone. Yeah, and your gowns. So we got a change of outfit. And next week, remember, we're, going to, we're going to repeat the red wine series because we had a little lot of technical difficulty last time. So we're going to repeat the red wine, and then we're going to have the food pairing at the very end. I hope you can come around and enjoy it. It's going to be fantastic. So any other questions, please let us know. It was a pleasure having you, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, cheers. cheers.